we are now going to look at direction and bearing. When we look at direction, we need to think about the cardinal points. And there are four cardinal points, north, east, west, and south. Then we get the half cardinal points, north, east, south, east, south, west, north, west. And then further, we get the sub cardinal points, north, north, east, east, north, east, uh, south, south, east, west, south, west, and so forth. So in total, there are 16 compass points. And we can read direction in either way, clockwise or anticlockwise. So we read the direction starting from a given point, and we say it is that this is the direction from this point to that point. Now let's look at a graphic example of this. So there we have the cardinal points, and let's now give direction. So we're starting off at point A, and let's give the direction from A to B. So what would the direction from A to B be? It will be east of northeast. The direction of A to C would be um, south of southeast. The direction of A to D would be closer to west, and so that's why we say that it is west of southwest. And then the direction of E, also closer to west, but in the northwest quadrant, so it is west of northwest. So that's the direction, and that's how we give direction. So we give it from this point to that point. And so you can see then that obviously, uh, what is the difference between east, north, east, and, and northeast? And what is the difference between south, southwest, and southwest? So you can see that it becomes tricky. Once we get to the points between those, those 16 points, it becomes challenging. But remember, when we're talking about these subcardinal points, we must not mix the letters up. We say west, northwest. We're not, we don't say northwest, west, because that doesn't make sense. And so it's either closer to west, that's why it's west of northwest. Or it's closer to east, that's why it's east of southeast. And so that's how we give the reference. But now, there's a much more accurate way of giving a direction. And that's when it comes to bearing. So bearing is also giving direction, but we do it differently. So let's look at the same example again and see how we would use bearing. So we want to work out what is the direction from A to B. And so what we're going to do is instead of giving it in the 16 cardinal points, we're going to make use of degrees. And so how do we measure the degrees? We make use of a protractor. And so notice how we keep the protractor. So the north of the protractor is facing north. And we're using the outside numbers of the protractor. Because remember the protractor's numbers running from clockwise on the outside and anti-clockwise on the inside. So we're using the outer side of the protractor. And then what we do is we measure from north to that line that joins A and B. And so the bearing from, from uh, B from A would be 67 degrees. So there you see it. So in other words, we say the bearing of B from A. Whereas with direction, we said from A to B. And so the point that we say from, that's where we put our protractor. So in each of these examples, we're going to be measuring from A. So our protractor will always be placed on A. Now let's put in another point. We had another point when we gave direction. We had point C. So what would the bearing of point C be? So we draw the line joining A and C. We take our protractor. No desired kept again. We measure clockwise from north. And so that is 165 degrees. How did we get that? We measured from north all the way to that line. And so that gives us 165 degrees. But now let's see what happens when we work with directions on the left-hand side of the north-south line. So let's point, put in point D. So now we've got point D, and now we're going to take the protractor. But now the way we're going to have to do is we're going to have to flip, flip the protractor. So now do you notice where north is? North is at the bottom. It's facing south. And so then we read from south up to the line for D. And so when we read from south up to the line for D, that works out to be 64 degrees. But remember, we measure, we, when we measure bearing, we always measure it clockwise from north. And so can you see that if we're measuring anything on the left-hand side of the north-south line, we have to add 180 in, because that's the full degree that we're measuring, isn't it? And so that's why when we add the 180 to the 64, our bearing now is 244 degrees. Let's look at another example. Remember in our previous example, when we looked at direction, we had the direction of A to E. And now let's work out the bearing of E from A. 
And so we draw the line in. We again notice how we place the protractor. And now the same is true for E. We measure from south. We measure 100 degrees. But because it's on the left-hand side of the north-south line, and because we're measuring clockwise from north, we have to measure all the way across. So we have to add in 180. So that's 100 degrees as measured from south, plus the 180 that goes from north to south. And that gives us a total of 280 degrees. So can you see our bearing is much more accurate because 280 degrees is 280 degrees. And notice we don't say 280 degrees west or 280 degrees south. The degrees are the degrees. And we measure a total of 360 degrees and that gives us an accurate uh, uh, bearing. It gives us an accurate direction. And so that is why bearing is much more absolute than the relative direction of the 16 cardinal points. The next thing we want to look at now is updating magnetic declination. Why do we need to update the magnetic declination and what do we mean by magnetic declination? First of all, when we're working with bearing on the map, we are measuring from true north. And true north refers to the geographic north pole. And all maps are drawn with north at the top of the map. But now, when we're working in the field, we're not going to be using a protractor. We're going to be using a compass. And a compass doesn't work with the geographic North Pole, but rather works with magnetic North Pole. So if we're working with a map and then working with a compass in the field, what we need to do is we need to match the map bearing with a compass bearing. And so in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to know what is the angular difference between true North and magnetic North. And that is the magnetic declination, the angular difference between true North and magnetic North. And because the magnetic north pole moves, that means that the magnetic declination given on a map is outdated because it's accurate at the time of making the map. And so that is why we need to update the magnetic declination if we're going to work out the compass bearing. So let's represent this graphically. So here we have a line pointing to true north. For South Africa, magnetic north is always west of true north. And so that angular difference then between true north and magnetic north is the magnetic declination. Now, if that magnetic declination were to move towards the west, what would happen? That would mean that the magnetic declination is becoming greater. If the magnetic north were to move towards the east, what would that mean? That would mean that the magnetic declination is decreasing, is becoming less. And so that's why we then make an update of it based on whether it is moving west or whether it's moving east. So now let's look at an example on a map and see how we can update the magnetic declination. So here we have a magnetic declination given for 2015. 21 degrees, 44 minutes west, changing 8 minutes west per year. So how do we update that? So we want to update it for 2020. So we're given the information for 2015. So what do we do? We take 2015 from 2020. That gives us 5 year difference. We know that the change is 8 minutes west, so that's going to be 8 times 5 years gives us 40 minutes. Because it's going west, the magnetic declination is increasing, so we add the 40 to the 44, so we get 21 degrees 84. But 84 is greater than 60, so we take 60 away from that, make it 22 degrees, and we then leave the remainder as the minutes, and so that's how we get 22 degrees 24 minutes. And so we took the 60 away, and that's how we ended up with 24. Now, let's put this together and work out the map bearing and then work out the compass bearing. So there we're going to work from the church and we're going to work out the bearing of spot at 1183 from the place of worship. So we draw a north-south line and we draw a line joining the two points. We take our protractor, we measure from south all the way and we get 64 degrees. So let's take a closer look at that to check uh, what are we reading on our protractor. So there you see an enlarged view. So there it's 164. We add the 180 because we're working on the left-hand side, and that gives us a map bearing of 344. Now let's put in the magnetic declination. So remember, the map bearing was 344. Magnetic declination, 22 degrees, 24 minutes, gives us a total of 366 degrees and 24 minutes. That's greater than 360, and we said that bearing only works for 360. So what we do is we subtract the 360 from that, and we get a compass bearing of 6 degrees and 24 minutes. Now, why did we do that? Well, if we look at it very carefully, 
the line 1183, the line that joins 1183 to the place of worship, actually lies inside the magnetic declination. That is why we get an answer greater than 360. Because can you see, there's the line joining it to 1183. There's the true north line. And this is where the magnetic north is. And so if we're measuring from magnetic north, we're only measuring a small degree. Whereas when we're measuring map bearing, we're measuring the whole degree all the way across to that line that joins up with 1183. So then, can you see, when we're working with map bearing, we're measuring only from magnetic north, and that is why the answer eventually is 6 degrees and 24 minutes. So then in this presentation, you've looked at map bearing, direction, and updating the magnetic declination. And hopefully now you'll be able to master these skills and use them on in interpreting the map.